Welcome back to Real House DIY. Finished our tile flooring and underneath here we have the Dieter heat membrane with the heating cables and temperature sensor wires. You can see those wires going up the conduits at the wall right here. They go up to the thermostat location. And today we're going to install the Dieter heat E-RT programmable thermostat. Now the soonest they can install this thermostat is after the tiles are installed and that's because you have to take some test measurements on the wires. And if you need to reference any of those videos, they're on my channel. I have a playlist for the tile floor installation with the Dieter heat. So installing the membrane, installing the cables, testing the cables, I have all those videos on my channel. So this thermostat, you can install it after the tiles are done, but before grout. However, you don't power it on and start applying heat to the floor until seven days after the grout is finished. Here I've gathered a number of tools I might need. Screwdriver, wire strippers, wire cutters, needleless pliers, wire nuts. Up here at the box, we have the cold lead for the heating cable. We have our two temperature sensor wires. And we have our Romex, also inside the box. I have a ground wire. And you don't necessarily need that ground wire if you're using a plastic box and plastic conduit. And I've not yet cut back any of the lengths of these wires. I'm going to do that. So it's way too much to fit into this box. So if we go ahead and open up this box with a thermostat. There we have the thermostat itself. Have some screws and a quick start guide. Now this quick start guide along with the instructions they send with the heating cable these do not have all the details that you might need for the installation and the setup but if you go into the Schluter website they have a very detailed manual for the E-RT thermostat. First before you start make sure you've taken the very last measurements for the temperature sensor wires and the heating cable. Get those last measurements recorded for your warranty. And for my power coming in here, I have the circuit breaker turned off at the panel. The first step for the thermostat says to make sure that the power supply voltage matches the voltage drain of the heating cable. I have 120 volts for everything. Next step, the screw here on the bottom of the thermostat. You can see as soon as the screw feels loose, it's loose from this white part of the faceplate. Then you can take that faceplate right off. So that faceplate, set that aside for now. And this here is your power base. You can install that next. So next, the line for your power input is going to connect to the bottom of that power base. So I'm going to press this back into the box a little bit. And I have the wires, cut them back to right about here. If you pull this out a little bit, if I'm cutting off here, then right here, power base stretched out. If you ever need to work on it, you have a little bit of wiggle room there. So I'm gonna cut the wires back about six inches. I'll remove most of the sheathing. just to the point where it enters the box, as well as remove the paper. And strip your wires. Now the grounds will all get tied together. So I'll move this ground off to the side. Have the ground for the box right here. Move that over to the side. And then we'll also have the ground from our heating cable. On the back of the power base, we have this clipped on cover. That comes off, and the screw is going to be on the bottom. The push button up at the top, load connects at the top, 
So the line input power connects at the bottom. Turn this upside down so we can read what it says. Here you can see it says line in the middle. It says L1, L, that's line power. L2, N, that's neutral. So I'm going to connect my black hot here and the white neutral here. So first I'll have to back out these screws a little bit. Got those screws loosened up. And the neutral, get the white wire in first. Tighten that up. And it does state in the instructions, tighten this to a specific torque. So if you have a torque screwdriver or torque wrench, you can do that. Okay, so I have the power input connected. Next in the instructions shows for load connection, it says no polarity. So you can connect those wires for the heating cable to either terminal that you want. And again, for the heating cable, there's way too much length on this wire to get it all fit back into the box. I'm gonna cut it to the same length as I did for the line wire. Strip back the sheathing a bit. Here you have to be careful of the ground. So it's not solid wire, it's stranded. Try to keep that together. I'm going to strip back these two wires, being careful that you didn't get any of the strands when you strip the wire. This one's stripped nice and clean. And these strands are actually pretty big, it'll be very easy to see if you broke any of those. I'm gonna remove this braiding on the ground. I'm gonna retwist it just like it was on the longer length, just like that. I'll have the grounds here, you know, head, use a wire net, connect those three grounds together. And then I connect those heating wires to the load. Again, polarity doesn't matter on these ones. Now we have these really long temperature sensor wires. Again, I'm gonna cut those to the same length as all the rest of my wires. One of those will be used as a spare. I'm going to wrap this up and tape it with a piece of electrical tape in the back of the box. And for the spare, you don't even need to strip the wires back if you ever need to use that in the future. At that point, you can strip the wires back. I'm 
and then the remaining temperature sensor wire which will be used this gets threaded through here we can connect it later and then tuck all the wires into the box and we'll attach the power base So we've got all these wires folded nicely to get into the box. Right before I get this all the way in, don't forget to clip on this cover to the back of the power base. Also watch your ground wire, make sure it's not getting close to these wire connections on the back of the power base. If you had extra cold lead to cut off, you might remember there was a sticker on one of the wires. It gives all the information about the cable. Inside the box of the spool of cable, there were three stickers. One of the stickers they put onto this wire here. There's a duplicate sticker. You're going to take this off and put it onto the wire before you close up the thermostat box. And then the remaining sticker has this box on it that says breaker number. That's where you're going to write the circuit breaker number. And this sticker goes inside the door of your circuit breaker panel. I've got that sticker. I'm going to wrap that around the black lead. I'm going to wrap that up a little bit to get that into the box. I did decide to move the temperature sensor wire to a different hole only because I could tell when it's coming through this one as it showed in the instructions is touching the edge of the metal box whereas going through this hole it comes straight out so don't want to risk pinching or cutting that temperature sensor wire Next, add your screws to secure this to the box. Next, my floor temperature sensor wire, still a bit long, I'm going to be connecting it to terminals C and D. For this one, there's no polarity as well. So I cut back those wires. Separate them just a tiny bit and strip the wires back. These go into the hole that's in the bottom there. And then the last step, go mount the faceplate back on. Latches on at the top. Press it in at the bottom. Then tighten the screw at the bottom. So there's temperature sensor installed. I'll get another video up for the initial power on and setup.